Hi everyone, it's me, Shy like Shy Swag, and today we are going to read some more of Lost in the Book, Chapter 9. As Belle watched, saucy-eyed, nevermore expand, taller and taller it grew until it towered over her. When it was nearly touching the ceiling, it stopped growing, and then its front cover swung open ever so slightly, and sounds spilled out of it. A woman's laughter, a man's shout, horses whinnying, music, glasses clinking. Belle didn't know whether to feel scared or thrilled. And then she saw something, something spidery and black, crouching in the shadow between Nevermore's cover and its pages. It darted out of the book crawled up a wall. Another scurried up the side of the desk. A third jumped onto a bookshelf. Belle, still sitting on the floor, scuttled backward away from the creatures. What are they? She wondered warily. Bugs? Mice? The cover opened wider, and more of the creatures crawled out. Belle scrambled to her feet, ready to stamp them away if they came if they came close. But then one did, and Belle's wariness turned to wonder as she saw what it was. Not an insect or a rodent, but a word. She knelt down and put her hand on the floor, palm open. Eager jumped onto it. Oof! Ran over her toes. Certain chased devious around the room. Precious and exquisite shoved each other. The room was filling up with words. They spilled out of the book like water tumbling down a stream bed. They curled around her ankles and tugged on the hem of her skirt. Belle put Eager down as she did. Nevermore's cover creaked all the way open. Its pages started turning slowly at first, then faster, blowing Belle's hair back, plastering her skirts to her legs. Then they abruptly stopped, and the book remained open to a page with only five words on it. The Countess Gives a Party. That page slowly turned, and Belle caught her breath, astonished by what she saw. There were no words on the paper, just a picture that took up the entire page. As Belle looked at it, the picture came to life. Dancers whirled, an orchestra played, Belle smelled perfume, wine, and roses. People, she thought, a longing as deep as hunger filled her as she realized how much she missed human faces, laughter, and conversations. She walked up to the page and touched it. It rippled and sparkled under her fingers like the surface of a sun-dappled pond. Mesmerized, she pushed her arm into it, all the way up to her elbow, then pulled it back out. Droplets of silvery light clung to her, clung to her skin like melted candle wax, then hardened in the air. When she shook them off, they landed on the wooden floor, sparkling like diamonds. What are you? she murmured to the book, as if answering her. The page rippled again. The look seemed to be beckoning to her. She put her arm into the silver with no ill effect. What if she stepped onto the book? Was that even possible? Belle's heartbeat quickened with excitement at the thought of walking into Nevermore's pages and finding out where the laughter and music were coming from. But something held her back. What was inside those pages? What if she didn't like it there? How could she get back? 
She remembered what the beast had told her about the enchanted books. Most are harmless, but some can be unruly. If I can handle the beast, I can handle unruly, she thought. Then she took a deep breath and stepped into the story. And that is the end of chapter chapter 9. Um, we can read chapter 10 if you like. Let's do it. Let's read chapter 10. Mademoiselle, look out, a voice cried. Belle turned around. Her heart lurched. She screamed. A carriage drawn by four enormous gray horses was bearing down on her out of the darkness. She leapt out of the way, flattening herself against a prickly hedge. The carriage flew past her and disappeared. Just a second. Belle turned around, her heart lurched. She screamed. A carriage drawn by four enormous gray horses was bearing down on her out of the darkness. She leapt out of the way, flattening herself against a prickly hedge. The carriage flew past her and disappeared. Shaking with fright, Belle pressed a hand to her chest. Had the driver called out a split second later, she would have been trampled. Where am I? she whispered, looking all around. Nevermore, stood upright, only a few paces away, its pages shimmering, but the library's workroom was gone. The book must be some sort of portal, Belle reasoned. A doorway from the library to here. Where is here? It was nighttime, and as Belle's eyes adjusted, she saw that she was standing in a graveled drive, candles flickering in lanterns lined its edges. The drive appeared to cut through a vast estate, its grounds dotted by huge leafy oaks. Ye trees, rose bushes, and shrubs cut in the shapes of animals. Still trembling, Belle looked to her left and saw a pair of tall iron gates open to let carriages through. A coat of arms was was em, was emblazoned on them. It showed two crossed Sith with a motto printed underneath them, Omino Vinco. Belle had learned a bit of Latin at her village's tiny library. I conquer all, she read out loud. The property must belong to a general, or an admiral, or a powerful nobleman, she thought. The gates were anchored to high stone pillars. Thick walls sloped off from them, and statues stood atop them, one of Hades, god of the underworld, the other of Persephone, his wife, Persephone, of Persephone, Hades, the god of the underworld, and the other of Persephone, his wife. Outside the gates lay a vast inky darkness. Belle looked to her right down the long drive and saw a golden light shining through the trees. 
Just then another carriage approached. This one drawn by four high-stepped white horses. Belle, standing safely out of the way now, watched as if it too sped down the drive. She cast an uncertain glance at the enchanted book, trying to decide what to do. Part of her wanted to step right back through its pages to the security of the beast's castle, but another, more adventurous part, wanted to find out where those carriages were going and what was giving off that golden light. The adventurous part won out, as it usually did, and Belle set off down the drive at a brisk pace. It curved and dipped as it wound through the estate, leading Belle past heavily wooded patches, ponds, and streams, thickets, and brambles. Oh, and brambles, brambles. There were times when she lost sight of the light altogether and wondered what she'd gotten herself into. But she stayed on the drive and dodgily kept walking. A good quarter hour after she started out, she emerged from a copse of slender birch trees and stopped dead amazed. Before her stood an immense chateau, a breathtaking barricue confession ablaze with candlelight. Oh, confection. Confection ablaze with candlelight. Painted carriages had pulled up to its sweeping staircase. The drivers straight backed the house. Oh, straight backed the horses, tossing their heads. The people alighting from them were the most dazzling creatures Belle had ever seen. Their faces were powdered, their lips rouged, some wore tiny fabric beauty marks on their on their cheeks. Women wore gowns in all colors of summer garment, uh, garden, and men sported silk frock coats and matching breeches. Gemstone buttons winked from their waistcoats. Ah, just a second, if you could. Just a second, people. I just want to find a pretty picture here. 
people dressed for a pretty ball party. So if you could hold on just a second, that would be really and livelier announced the arrival of royalty and foreign dignitaries. Belle watched wide-eyed as a Japanese princess, the Shah of Persia, and an, oh, the Shah of Persia, a Russian count, and an ambassador from England ascended the stairs. They all look so exotic and fascinating, and Belle yearned to speak with them, to hear about their lives, and learn about their countries. Until she journeyed to the Beast's castle, Belle had never been out of Villeneuve, Kai Oto, uh, Chires, St. Petersburg, London. How incredibly exotic those faraway cities were compared with her dull, tiny village. With a quick glance around to make sure no one was watching her, Belle scurried closer. She had no right to enter these premises, but she couldn't help herself. She wanted to drink in every glittering detail. As she hugged the edge of the drive, trying to stay in the shadows, she heard people call out. Greetings to one another, and saw men bow to women and kiss their hands. Captivated, she moved closer. she moved closer still. A row of cherry trees fanned out from either side of the mansion's steps. Belle darted to the one closest to the house, hiding under the lacy branches. She wrapped her arms around the tree's slender trunk and pressed her cheek against it. Aching to join all the beautiful people, but she knew it was ridiculous. She knew it was a ridiculous wish. What a contrast I'd make to the elegant company, she said ruefully, looking down at her clothing. In my filthy dress, with my dusty boots, she was about to say, but the word died in her throat. Her blue work dress was gone. In its place was a shimmering mere silk ball gown. So that is chapter, um, that was chapter 10, chapter 9 and 10. So thank you for um, watching and thank you for listening. And um, please feel free to leave any uh, comments, well, uh, sorry, um, likes. Please feel free to leave any likes and uh, feel free to subscribe. And have a good rest of your day. This is Charlotte, like Charlotte's Web. Thanks.